<laughs> I praise the Lord that he's raining down blessings on us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know we really need the rain? Now, this is one of those things where we, I said, so Lord, I know you're blessing us, but aren't you blessing us a little bit too much? But I'm so glad that the Lord has really blessed us here today. I want to give you this message today, and it's a, one that I want to give you. Uh, we always need a refresher. And even though that we are saved in this house, a lot of us are saved in this house, this goes out to not just to you, but to those who are needing outside of this house. And if you're watching on mygladtidings.org, this message is for you. We want you to accept this message and make sure that this message goes to your heart because you're our heart also. And I want you to know today that if you're watching this service from anywhere, anytime, that you are welcome to this church, a glad tidings assembly of God, and we are your family and you are ours. I want to give you this message today. It's called Our City of Refuge, our city of refuge. I'm going to be in Joshua chapter 20, verses 1 through 9 is that whole chapter, our city of refuge. Let me read this chapter for you. And this is about the cities of refuge today. The Lord also spoke to Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint for yourselves cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you through Moses. When the slayer who kills a person accidentally or unintentionally may flee there, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he flees to the one of those cities and stands at the entrance of the gate of the city and declares his case in the hearing of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city as any one of them, I mean as one of them, and give him a place that he may dwell among them. Then if the avenger of blood pursues him, they shall not deliver the slayer into his hand because he struck his neighbor unintentionally but did not hate him beforehand. And he shall dwell in that city until he stands before the congregation for judgment. And until the death of one who is high priest in those days, then the slayer may return and come to his own city and his own house to the city from which he fled. So he appointed Kadesh, Galilee, and the mountains of Naphtali, Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim and Kerjev Arba, which is Hebron, in the mountains of Judah. And on the other side of the Jordan by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness on the plain from the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth and Gilead, from the tribe of Gad and Golan and Bashan, from the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger who dwelt among them, that whoever killed a person accidentally might flee there and not die for the hand of the avenger, by the hand of the avenger of blood, until he stood before the congregation. Let's pray. Dear God, we honor you and praise you and thank you for this time and thank you for your blessings. We honor you, Father, because of your loving kindness and tender mercies and outstretched hand. And we thank you, Father, for this word we're about to receive. We thank you, Father, for who you are. And thank you, Lord. I don't preach in my own strength, but I preach in yours. And anoint this, this lump of clay, these lips of clay, as I preach, as we preach the word that you've given me. I honor you and thank you for this time and given me the privilege to speak in front of such beautiful people. 
and to our internet family and those who are watching outside of this church. I pray for them also that they be inspired in your precious name. Amen? Amen. Now as I preach this, this setting is the land of Canaan which has been possessed and subdued. Now, if you remember, the Lord blessed them to get a promised land and they finally got in and now they are taking care of what the Lord has given them. The various tribes, they've received their inheritance and things are starting to wind down as far as takeover, the takeover and the occupation of the promised land. And this is the concern. And however, there's still much work to be done by the people of Israel and by Joshua. And in this chapter, we find them carrying out a command that was given to them by Moses in Numbers chapter 38. They were to appoint six cities that were to be known as cities of refuge. These cities are to be, were to be made available to someone who was killed by another person by accident or intentionally. They could escape to any of these six cities and find safety and help. Has anyone in this house ever done anything really bad by accident? Come on. Have any of you done anything really bad by, done by anything bad by accident? I want to preach about these cities of refuge this morning. You know, and, and what they do, they display for us a clear picture of salvation that is to be found only in Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of people have not read this chapter as that, but allow me to share some truths this morning concerning these cities of refuge. Now, what was the purpose of these cities? And, and sometime, I want you to go back here in this house and you who are watching, read chapter, Joshua's chapter 20. That chapter, that verse is very, very poignant. What was the purpose of these cities? Again, let me read verses 1 through 3. The Lord also spoke to Joshua saying, Speak to the children of Israel saying, Appoint for yourself cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses. That the slayer who kills a person accidentally or unintentionally may flee there and they shall, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. First of all, they were there to serve as a refuge. It is clear from these verses that these cities were to be set to protect the person, again, who accidentally or unintentionally take the life of another person. When the Lord gave Israel this law, he made no provision for a security patrol or a police force. Every crime against society was to be dealt with swiftly and in accordance with the nature of the offense. For instance, if a person stole something, they were to make restitution. The punishments were always designed to fit the crime. An eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, womb for womb, or stripe for stripe. These are in the law. And if the crime in question happened to take the life of another human being, the nearest family member or kinsman of the slain person had the right to avenge the death of a fallen relative. However, it's clear that reading the passages here in Numbers 35 that the Lord sees difference between murder and manslaughter. Therefore, a man had accidentally taken another life. He could escape to one of these six cities of refuge. And there it was determined that if the death had indeed been an accident or unintentional, he could find safety from the avenger of the blood. So these cities were established as a refuge. Now, these cities were to serve as a reminder. Now, for our sakes here, 
These cities serve to point out certain facts about the salvation that we enjoy in Christ the Lord Jesus. Just as the places, these places where man could escape in a time of desperate need. So Jesus is a place of safety this morning. Who knows that today? You see, here's our problem. We're born sinners. We are. It isn't our fault. We're just born with an old sinful nature that, that we inherited from our father Adam. But even though it isn't our fault, we stay this way. As we grow older and reach an age where we can make a choice regarding sin, we all choose to sin. That makes sin a double-edged sword. We're guilty by birth and by practice. Now, now, now this is true. We are in deep trouble. And this is true. Just like there was death sentence on all those who took the life of another person, there's also a death sentence on every person born in the human race. We are all being pursued by the avenger of blood. And unless the Lord delays his coming, the, the end of our life's journey is death. And after death, if you don't have the Lord's salvation... There's nothing to look forward to but hell and all this mis misery. Y'all mind if I preach this morning? We need a refuge. We need a place where we can run to and find safety, safety for our souls. I praise God that there is a place where the sinner can escape and find help and hope. A place where we can find a new life and a new start. A place where the avenger of blood cannot touch us. Every, he cannot touch us ever there. It's a place that, that a man, that's, and, and that man, that place that we can go to, his name is Jesus. Someone say Jesus today. Notice what these cities of refuge teach us about him. The provision of these cities. What was the provision of these cities? First of all, they were provided by God. I'm going to tell you how. Man did not come up with the suggestion or idea of these cities. This was a nation that was birthed in the heart of the mind of God. He wanted to teach his people that murderers had to pay for their crimes. Hence the avenger of the blood. Yet he also wanted to teach his people that there was a place of mercy for those who were only guilty of an accident. Therefore, God gave them cities of refuge. Now, may I remind you this Sunday morning, may I remind you that Jesus Christ is also the gift of God. Remember that the Bible, what the Bible says about him. Christianity and salvation through the shed blood of Jesus did not originate in the heart of man. This thing is all God's idea. From the start to finish, this thing we are involved in this morning is the work of God. When man creates a religion, religion, let me put that up here. I'm thinking about this here. When a man creates a religion... He fixed it in such a way that he's in control of it. You know what? He, he sets it up as a system of works and makes himself responsible for getting himself to whatever heaven is striving for. But you know what? God, on the other hand, does it in such a way that man is left out and blotted out of the picture. All man does is to trust Jesus and his sovereign Savior by faith. And even that faith is given to him by the Lord that you use. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9 says this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Salvation is all God or it isn't real at all. Let me tell you something else about these cities. These cities were provided by the grace of God. God could have allowed the manslayer to die like any other person who had taken a life. 
However, in this awesome grace, and every time I read this, I think of his grace, his awesome grace, he made a way that those folks who had accidentally or unintentionally taken the life of another might find refuge and help. Now, by the same token, God could have allowed all sinners to go to hell. (laughs) Aren't you glad he's given us grace? I want y'all to get excited now. Aren't you glad he's given us grace? After all, we're guilty in his sight and we deserve nothing but damnation and the fires of hell. But I praise the glorious name of the Lord this morning that God sent his son to take our sins upon himself on that cross. And I thank God that Jesus paid the price that sinners like you and I might live through him. Praise God. And whatever anyone may tell you about getting to heaven, the word of God tells us that it will never happen unless it happens through the grace of our God. Folks, it's all God from start to finish. Why? Because he initiates the process. He provides the means. Here's the means. Romans 3, 25 says, this says, whom God set forth as a propitiation. That means he's the means by his blood through faith to demonstrate the right, his, his righteousness because of his forbearance. God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. And then he saves those who believe. And he keeps those he saves. 1 Peter 1 5 says, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. See, see, you and I are capable of doing none of these things ourselves. There's a lot of people think that they can save themselves, but they can't. If we were left alone to get ourselves to heaven, we will all wind up in hell. Let me tell you, it's all God. Let me read verses 4 through 6. It says, And when he flees to one of those cities and stands at the entrance of the gate of the city and declares the case in the hearing of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city as one of them and give him a place where he may dwell among them. Then if the avenger of the blood pursues him, they shall not deliver the slayer into his hands. Because he struck his neighbor unintentionally, but did not hate him beforehand. He shall dwell in that city until he stands before the congregation for judgment. And until the death of the one who is high priest in those days, then the slayer may return and come to his own city, in his own house, to the city from which he fled. Again, these cities had the power to save. When the manslayer arrived in the city, his case was heard by the elders, and all it was determined at the, after that, that, that death had been indeed been an accident. If it's been determined that it was unintentional, he was given a place within a city, one of those cities, and was protected from the avenger of blood. The city of refuge allowed a man who would have otherwise surely and would have otherwise ultimately died. Remember in the book of the law an eye for an eye if you killed someone your life was taken. But without the city of refuge again someone who was falsely accused would have surely died so it is with us so it is with Jesus he's the only one who can guarantee salvation to the soul of man 
When a sinner comes to Jesus by faith and accepts him as a savior, that person immediately is adopted in the family of God. He, he has his sins washed away forever and his name written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. He is forever saved by the grace of God. No other system of belief can make that claim. You can try anything yourself outside of God and proclaim that you will be saved and you can guarantee yourself you will surely fail. However, if you will trust Jesus Christ in his death at Calvary, his resurrection and shed blood, you will be saved, guaranteed. Romans 10, 9 through 10, and if you're watching this and hearing this today in this house, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then the cities had the power to secure. Notice that one of the biggest keys is that as long as a person stayed within the city, he was safe. He could live there until the day of judgment. And for long as the high priest lived, and when the high priest died, the manslayer was free to return home without fear. You know what? When we commit our souls to the Lord Jesus for salvation, we too are secured. Unlike the person in the city of refuge, we cannot leave. <laughs> it's impossible for us to get out of our relationship with Almighty God. But what about the day of judgment? It was determined that the manslayer was guilty. Then he was cast out. I know I'm guilty. What does that say about my situation? You know what? It just adds another glory to God. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, that was our judgment day. Now that day has passed forever and we are safe in the city of refuge. I'm safe in Jesus. We're safe in Jesus, my high priest, my Lord, our protector, and our, uh, my soul. As long as he lives, guess what? We live. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Therefore, mm, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. What a glorious privilege we have been given just to know that we are eternally saved. Someone say, praise the Lord. And then the cities, their power was abundant. The cities of refuge will work for all those who fled to them. They were sufficient for the need. Again, let me tell you this again. I'm, I, I'm so glad that I can remind you today that Jesus Christ is abundant and he's sufficient for the need of the soul. His grace is sufficient. Regardless of the past you carry. Regardless of the deepness of your sin. Regardless of the hardness of your heart regardless of anything you wish to name that you may feel might keep you from coming to him, let me tell you this. He's bigger than all of it. How many know he's bigger than all of it? He's our savior God who is above all and he's able to save your soul. He cannot and need not and will not turn anyone away. His power is sufficient to the task. There's no need to fear that it won't work for them. God's promise of salvation through Jesus is given to all who come to him. Everyone. I can think of Revelation 22 and 17. It says that, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Mm-hmm. Let me read verses 7 through 9. He says, So they appointed Kadesh in Galilee, the mountains of Naphtali, Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim, and Kerjavarba, which is Hebron, in the mountains of Judah, 
Now on the other side of the Jordan by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness and the plain in the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth and Gilead, from the tribe of Gad and Golan and Bashan, from the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger who dwelt among them, that whoever killed a person accidentally might flee there and not die by the hand of the avenger of the blood until he stood before the congregation. What was the position of these cities? These cities were available to all. God provided six cities of refuge. There were three east of the Jordan and three west of the Jordan. They were placed so that there was no tribe that was too far from the city of refuge. They were strategic, strategically placed by God. They were available to everyone, no matter where they were or who they were. Whether the manslayer was a stranger, there was a city of refuge open to that stranger, and that's why the Lord did it. What a picture this is. Just as those ancient cities were available to all, so Jesus Christ is available to all as well. The plan of salvation makes only one requirement on a man and that he's required to be a sinner. If you're a sinner and you know it, if you're willing to admit to God, that, and, and if you know and believe that Jesus Christ, on the, he died on the cross shedding his blood to, to, to pay for your sins and that he rose again from the dead, then my friend, my brother, my sister, if you're in the house, if you're watching, whether you are young or old, whether you are brown, yellow, black, or white, you can be saved. You can be saved today. You don't have to run from the avenger of the blood for another minute. But you can run to Jesus and be saved by the grace of God. Jesus is available to everyone today who wants him. I can think of Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And the cities were accessible to all. Let me tell you something. I love this part. It says, Just as these cities were spaced out over the country and were available to every Israelite, they were also accessible to every person. Again, they were strategically made. There are some reasons why. First of all, they were prominent. Most of these cities were built on top of mountains. See, most of these cities, uh, 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 most of these cities of ancient Israel were built on white limestone. When the, the, the sun hit these cities, they gleamed. Even in the nighttime, they gleamed. Under the light of the moon, they would be visible. They were easily seen even from many miles away. The Lord made it that way. They were prepared. There were, there were certain preparations that were made in and around these cities that guaranteed the manslayer that he would find safety when he arrived at the city of refuge. First of all, the roads were never blocked or closed. The priests would make sure that the roads leading to these cities were clear from barriers, obstacles of obstructions, and always open to the traveler. They were never closed. No matter what the time of day or night, the gates of the city of refuge were never closed. And also... The directions to these cities was easy to follow. There were signposts with the Hebrew word miklat. Miklat, M-I-K-L-A-T, written on them that had been set up to the point, the way, to set the, up, set up to point the way to the city of refuge. The word miklat means refuge. 
And there was no way for anyone to misunderstand the way of getting to any of these cities. Again, our God made it strategically made and done so you can easily get there. There were no excuses that you could not find the city because everywhere you went, you saw Miklat. You get to one, refuge. You get to the next one, refuge. And then you're finally to the city. What a picture this was. What a picture this paints for us of salvation that can be found in Jesus Christ. See, just like the city is a refuge, he's accessible to all. He's like a city on top of a hill. He can be seen by the weary traveler. And the road leading to him is always clear. On his side, there are no obstructions. When he died on the cross, he died for all sin. So sin is not a problem that can keep you from coming. He had cleared the way. The only things that can keep you from getting to him are those things that lay on your path. Things like unbelief. Things like pride. And he's always available. Jesus Christ is never closed. (laughs) Y'all better get that. Jesus Christ is never closed. He's never closed for business. He doesn't have a nine to five banker hours. He'll receive anyone who will come to him at any time and he's wanting and he's waiting for you to show up. And then the way to him is clearly marked. Thankfully, God has gone before and placed a signpost we call the Bible. It is clear in which in what it teaches us about Jesus Christ. It tells us that he is the only way to God. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then if we will come to him, then we must come by faith. The only question that, must, that, that remains and that we must answer is are we trusting in him alone? Are we trusting in our sovereign Jesus alone? And see, there's a word here for the children of the Lord. Let me give this to you. Thank you, God. You see, those of us who know about the refuge are to go out into the highways and hedges and we are to set up the signs pointing the way to him. You see, there should be no way, there should be no doubt about where we stand. We need to be pointing the way to Jesus at all times. That is why we always need to have a clear word and a clear message. Everything we do should point to our blessed Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now let me tell you what these cities represent. There's a meaning in their names. These six cities, they they, they paint a wonderful uh, picture of provisions of God which belongs to us through Jesus Christ. First, there was Kadesh, means righteousness. This was a refuge for the unclean. Then there was Shechem, meaning shoulder, a refuge for for that one lost in the wilderness of sin. Then there was courage of Arba, which is in Hebrew means fellowship. I can think of 1 John 1 and 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Courage of Arba means a refuge for the lonely sinner. And then we go to the other side. Beza means fortress, meaning a refuge for the helpless sinner. Then is Ramoth means heights, a refuge for the wretched sinner. And then is Golan in Bashan, meaning joy. This was a refuge for the downcast. There is a perfect example of their necessity here. Without these cities, many innocent people would have died. But their existence of these cities guaranteed that they would continue to enjoy life. And let me tell you something. If you're watching today, if you're in this house, if you're watching or or, 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 or sitting in these seats right now, my lost brother or sister, you might not see it this morning, but you need Jesus in your life. Without him, you have no refuge and, and from the wrath of God. And when one day will wind up in hell if you're not with God. You'll be lost forever in torment. I'm speaking from my heart. You may not like that today, but it's the truth. The simple fact is that you need to be saved today if you're watching today. Will you do it? Will you, will, you, will you come to Jesus this morning while he can give you eternal life? And I'm talking about life more abundantly and in heaven. One thing I know is you can live without a lot of things in this world, but you cannot make it to heaven without Jesus. You cannot. And there's a perfect example of these cities' character. These cities... Let me say this. These cities by their nature spoke of the grace of God and his love for the needy. They were there because God cares. The same is true about Jesus. He is there for your salvation simply because God cares about you. He does not want you to die and go to hell. He wants you to be saved because he wants that so much. He proved it by giving his son and allowing his son, Jesus Christ, to suffer on that cross and on that dirty place for you. My brother, my sister, if you're watching you in this place, he has a place for you. You can enter into a refuge and find a dwelling safe place in Jesus. And as I finish up today, there, there's this story in the book of Second Samuel chapter 2. We see a man named Abner He was a valiant man. He was Abner, who had been Saul's commander-in-chief. He was being pursued by a man named Asiel. This is in 2 Samuel. Abner tries to reason with Asiel. But Asiel continues to pursue Abner. Abner is carrying a spear And apparently, Asiel runs into the spear and dies. Later, we find Abner at the skates of the city of Hebron. Remember, Hebron is one of the cities of refuge. There, he is met by Joab. 
David's commander in chief. Joab also was the older brother of ACL. Joab catches Abner at the gate of the city of refuge and kills him to avenge the death of ACL. And what's most, most remarkable and striking about this is that David, as he mourned the death of Abner in 2 Samuel chapter 3, is that if David were saying, Abner, you died a fool. You are right there at the gates of refuge. All you had to do was walk right in. Nobody had to tie you up. You could have been saved, but you died like a fool. If you're looking at this today and watching, friend, brother, sister, you don't, don't let the same thing happen to you. Nobody has you tied down this morning. All you have to do is walk into the refuge and be saved. Our refuge, Jesus Christ, is waiting for you. Again, if you're watching and you're tired of running from your sins and feeling trapped by a hopeless situation, I'd like to invite you to get rid of your pride, admit that you need a refuge in your life today and come to Jesus this morning. I want to know, I want to let you know that many people in this house have taken down their pride and got a refuge in Jesus today. If you found a refuge in Jesus, raise your hand today with me. Hallelujah. You know what? He'll save your soul and take you to heaven when you leave this world. And I want to ask you, isn't that what you really want? Mm-hmm. Aren't you tired of empty promises and dead in days? Aren't you sick of knowing that hell is getting bigger and bigger and is waiting on you? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like to be sure that you're going to heaven? If you need Jesus in your heart and life, I invite you to come to him right now if you're watching today, if you're in the house too. I want to pray with you who are watching this sinner's prayer that you get your life in order now because our faithful Jesus Christ is coming soon. I ask this from time to time. Who knows he's coming soon? Who's, who, come, who, who knows he's really coming soon? He's coming soon, sooner than we think. He's right around the corner. And this, and this time, it's right around the corner. I want you to be ready when he comes. And as I always say, why don't you meet him now? Because you don't want to meet him later. He's a God that will give us his strength and always take care of us. He's our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. As he gave refuge to the Israelites, to those who accidentally or intentionally killed someone, he can give us a refuge of our sins. He doesn't care what you did or when you did it or how you did it. When he forgives you, he forgets your sin. And I'm grateful today that I can preach this message that someone might be saved. So if you're watching today, or if you're in the house, if you need Jesus, I want you to bow your heads with me. And I know there's saved folks in this house who will pray with you. And I feel the need of prayer as I pray right now for you. So if you're watching, bow those heads with me. Be sincere. And you accept Jesus as your refuge today. Repeat after me, dear Jesus. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for loving me enough 
to give me this word and giving me this chance to give this life, give my life to you. And I want to give my life to you right now. I want you to be my refuge and my strength. I want you to be my present help. And I need it now and forever. Please, God, forgive me of my sins and my shame. I know I've done wrong, but I want to be right now. Make me right. Make my soul right. Give me a new start. Change my life and make it whole. I want to live for you. I want to give you my life forever and ever. Now, Lord, as I give my life to you, I promise to live for you and serve you. I thank you, Father, for forgiving me and dying on a cross for me and taking your sins for me. You're awesome, God. <laughs> and I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for saving me. Amen. Give God a hand praise today. Hallelujah. Praise God.